Six years ago, I painted a rather elaborate watercolor featuring some turkey birds. I didn't have a YouTube channel at the time, so this Thanksgiving season, I thought I should paint and record another miniature turkey so I can show you what I consider to be the most important skill for watercolor artists. The one that will take you from a flat beginner level painting to a much more nuanced, realistic looking artwork. I'm talking about the light to dark approach that is very unique to a watercolor medium and includes capturing only the lightest underlying shades at first before using fully saturated color. It's more than just a two-step process, it's a way of seeing your reference image and translating it on paper in the way that takes advantage of the watercolor properties and helps you avoid a lot of common frustrations. It's essential for improving your watercolor skills and I think this may be quite eye-opening if you're a beginner. For me, it certainly was when I first started to learn about watercolors and if you've been practicing for a while and feel stuck with your progress, it will help you solve many common issues that you may be attributing to lack of technique or maybe bad art supplies it will most certainly help you improve your results. So let's go back to the start and I will show you exactly what I'm talking about. We have a beautiful reference photo and a blank page. I'm going to sketch my turkey in my etcher sketchbook, a relatively small size for this type of detailed image, but this is the best watercolor sketchbook I've found so far. It's from etcher and it's the same as the regular paper I paint on, which is a slightly textured cold pressed, 140 pounds. Now that the sketch is ready, we can start painting and the plan is to break down our process into two steps. First, we'll include only the lightest layers that we see underneath the dark feathers, like the highlights on the chest, some blocks of color on the tail, and the head of the turkey, of course. Then we will follow with dark details on top, using very saturated color and much smaller brushes. You may wonder what would happen if I tried to capture everything at once instead of breaking it down into separate layers. For example, if I were to paint one tail feather using brown and blue at the same time, my colors would bleed into each other and no matter how careful I am, my values, meaning my lights and darks, would get confusing and inconsistent. I would end up with a bit of a muddy mess, if you will, no matter how experienced or confident I may feel about my brushwork. Which is why in my real-time Patreon classes, I always provide step-by-step -step photos to show this layering technique and make sure that my students understand and get used to painting from light to dark. I call this first layer a map of color. I just showed you several examples of this transition from light to dark and with more complex compositions. Sometimes you can break it down into three steps to get an even slower, more nuanced progress, but the logic is always the same. Start very light and then add smaller, darker, more saturated and more vibrant details. So let's get started on our map of color, our first light layer on the turkey. I will be using several colors that I see, mostly shining through the dark black feathers, including light blue, I'm using thylo blue green shade, and some quinacridone red on the head and the neck. More blue on the tail and the wings, and some burnt sienna on the tail feathers. I will leave the lightest feathers, the ones that appear almost white, without any paint because in traditional watercolor we don't have the luxury of white pigment. All these small blocks of color that I'm working on right now will be covered by darker details later on. And in the center, I will get a little fancy using wet on wet technique and mixing several pigments directly on wet paper. Try to look closer at the reference photo and you will notice a wide variety of beautiful colors, all reflecting in the highlights. Kind of anything goes here. I see a lot of yellows, blues and greens, maybe even turquoise. 
maybe you see some purple there as well it's really up to you which pigments you're using i'm adding them slowly with the tip of my brush never using fully saturated color always staying very light for this stage I tried some super granulating paints as well, but I don't think it works. I generally don't like granulating paints for my underpainting. I think they're meant to stand on their own. Here they will be covered by darker blues later on. So let's maybe add some darker endothrone blue around the edges and we will be done with this step. Now let's make sure everything is dry and then we're ready to actually paint what we see, that top layer of dark feathers and details on the head of the turkey, all the intricate coloring, all using indigo. Or you can try something like soft Payne's gray. I wouldn't go fully black for two reasons. First, black straight from the tube always looks a bit unnatural and second, it's nice to have that flexibility of super dark blue like indigo that you can water down in some areas and still have that nice bluish tint without mudding up the colors underneath, which is what would happen if we used black. I avoid pure black in general unless I have very compelling reasons to use it. The most important thing I want you to notice here is that I'm covering most of the areas that are already painted in the first layer, leaving just a few spots of color. And the result is quite seamless because I went with this two-step approach. Painting the entire thing using only the lightest colors you see at first is a lot easier and it actually prevents many of the common struggles that you may be encountering. For example, muddy colors, bleeding or uneven edges, not enough contrast, and the overall lack of depth. We didn't need to worry about any of those details in the first stage because we were only focusing on large underlying layers. Now we're working on darker shapes and we're not worried about disturbing the underlying colorful layer of paint. This is very powerful. This entire approach is much more effective than trying to get everything done at once with one layer of color. It took me years to realize as a self-taught artist because it's not the most obvious thing and it doesn't necessarily apply to other mediums. With gouache or with acrylics, for example, you can always come back and add lighter color on top of the dark or paint one multicolor segment using two different acrylic pigments at the same time, side by side, because they don't bleed as much. But for watercolors, it's absolutely essential because lighter colors simply don't show up on top of the dark and when placed next to each other they bleed and blend together. So that's why we use a two-step approach with enough drying time in between. I'm switching to my tiniest double zero brush here but of course this is not necessary you can just use the tip of your round brush maybe in size two or three as I mentioned I'm painting on a very small sheet of paper and I'm trying to capture the tiniest details you can simplify quite a bit and skip some of this intricate work without losing the overall effect. But it's important to note that the general principle does apply even if you're painting on a much larger sheet of paper. In other words, in general, for your second layer of color, you will likely want to switch to either a smaller, more precise brush or switch to working with just the tip of your brush to get all those nuances and tiny strokes. And once again, when everything is dry, we can always add a glaze or two, maybe a few shadows on top, make some areas a bit brighter or more vibrant if you want, working once again with some lighter colors, taking advantage of the transparent nature of the watercolor medium. I will now add some background elements as well as a smaller turkey friend here on the left. 
and I will be doing a full walkthrough of my sketchbook towards the end of the year, so don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Let me know in comments below if you like this more casual sketchbook turkey versus the elaborate decorative turkeys with peonies that I've painted a while ago. Sometimes it's really nice to just work on a smaller format. And my warmest wishes to everyone who is celebrating this Thanksgiving season. Thank you to all my Patreon subscribers for their support. I will see you soon with more watercolor magic.